Today marks, uh, is marked rather as the International Day of UN Peacekeepers. The South African National Defense Force honors SANDF members who died while serving under the UN Peacekeeping Missions flag for their courage, service and sacrifices. ENCA's Govan Whittles has more on that story and joins us now for an update. I've got a whole host of stories that I could tell you, uh, Govan, about the work that uh, UN peacekeepers do and, you, you know, where I've witnessed in a number of countries, more prominently for me, uh, being the work that has been ongoing for a number of years in regions of the eastern DRC. What is today all about uh, in, the, in the context of the UN peacekeeper, but specifically the South African component of that story of the Blue Helmets? Well, it's about paying homage to the South African soldiers who died in those peacekeeping missions. And just on the DRC, the SANDF chief confirming that they've rotated the troops there so they've got fresh, fresh legs in the DRC. They've also got fresh, fresh legs in Cabo Delgado. That's just part of the SANDF strategy uh, to keep rotating the troops. But today they were paying homage to uh, the SANDF members who died at UN peacekeeping missions in the DRC, in Burundi, um, in different parts of the continent. Um, and also giving us more details about the effect South Africa has had on these UN peacekeeping missions. And then touching, um, quite frankly, on some of the more controversial parts of these peacekeeping missions. Remember that uh, there have been countries who have had their troops sent back for ill discipline. In this regard, the chief of the SANDF saying that South African troops discipline um, is stellar and their record is only improving in any sort of... Um, problems that may have occurred with South African soldiers would, would only be from 2016 or before that. And in the last two years, he's seen a marked improvement in the behavior of South African troops on these peacekeeping missions. Of course, he's uh, um, paid tribute uh, to the families uh, of these SANDF soldiers who were sent on these missions for allowing them to join the army, saying that they've paid the ultimate sacrifice and they'll never be forgotten. He laid a wreath um, at the memorial here at this military base in Bloemfontein, where we are at the uh, he was joined by the Deputy Minister of, of uh, uh, Defense, uh, Tabang Makwetla, also a representative from the United Nations, and then, of course, dozens of family members of those people, uh, those soldiers who died on mm. the front line fighting in those peacekeeping missions. Let's take it back now and listen to the SANDF chief and what he had to say about the behavior of South African soldiers who were deployed on these peacekeeping missions. We will not tolerate any form of ill discipline. Uh, that is that is the first iteration that one will make. I, I, I want to uh, remind you that um, the reports that come forth are reports that are based on things that might have happened in the past. The past two years, uh, there hadn't been any significant increase in uh, levels of ill discipline. We haven't seen repatriation of our soldiers as a result of ill discipline. Uh, the United Nations from time to time will provide information on cases that have been concluded. And some of those cases might have happened as early as 2016. And they might have been concluded, but when it is reported, it is perceived as though it is contemporary challenge that has just happened. Hmm. So it's interesting to hear um, the uh, commander of the SANDF um, saying that there's been an improvement in as far as behavior is concerned among the troops deployed for some of these missions, Govan. And one would certainly hope that there has been that kind of improvement, but I'm not sure the extent to which we can say the problems are now in the past because there had been uh, serious concerns about the behavior of some of the troops deployed. Not all of them, some of them that are deployed. I'm also wondering, Govan, that did he weigh in on issues to do with the budget uh, of defense in this country? I don't imagine that's in his domain because he's not a political player in all of this. But he's the one who has to give uh, you know, command uh, in as far as the troops are concerned. And in some instances, um, the, the resource challenge uh, comes to the fore. 
It does indeed, and he approached it uh, very carefully. Instead, um, talking about the capacity of the SANDF to maintain its deployments on various fronts, should it be important to note here that the SANDF uh, prides itself on, on having the capability to deploy to four or five areas um, at the same time, and that's the kind of size we have um, in our SANDF. And with regards to that, he says there was a point at which they were deployed in Samim, uh, uh, which is the South African mission in Mozambique. Um, then they were deployed at home during the COVID-19 lockdown, and then, of course, they had various other deployments with the United Nations peacekeeping uh, missions across the African continent. And while that was happening, happening, he says, you'll never have enough resources, but they managed to make it work. And they weren't uh, found wanting on any of the fronts. And in fact, they've been able to rotate their troops as required without losing that capacity. But he has pointed to, to the necessity of improving the SANDF's uh, capacity for resources, particularly with machinery. And we've heard from the Minister of Defense, uh, Tandi Modise, that they are looking to uh, improve uh, some of their units, particularly in the Air Force um, and the the army. But I also spoke to the Deputy Minister um, of Defense, Tabang Makwetla, regarding South Africa's effectiveness in the operations that it's leading. And one of the real litmus tests of the SANDF has been the Samim mission, what's happening in Cabo Delgado um, and in Mozambique. And in that respect, uh, the Minister, the Deputy Minister, saying that there have been serious victories recorded and those victories are starting to yield fruits. But of course, underpinning all of that is the politics behind it, which needs to be addressed. Let's Let's take a look now at what Tabang Makwetla had to say. Our deployment in Mozambique, it's not peacekeeping, it's peace enforcement. And it is peace enforcement against uh, um, terrorism. Uh, it is peace enforcement uh, in a conflict that involves people with fundamentalist views then you'll appreciate how intractable at times uh, that kind of problem can be. Uh, so it is uh, uh, our uh, uh, desire that uh, the, the military intervention should, uh, for purposes of attaining sustainable resolution of that conflict, uh, be uh, complemented by other interventions to make sure that uh, we get what we went in there for. Deputy Minister of Defense Tabang Makwetla there ending that live reporting by ENCA's Govan Whittles.